sisters, welcome to my channel. If you are new, please don't forget to subscribe. This is Uncle Lenny. Uh, this evening, I'm so privileged sitting down next to uh, Bishop Lombe, our founder, our founder fathers in our community, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pastor, you're wel Bishop, you're welcome to my channel. Please introduce yourself to your Thank audience. you very much, uh, Sani. Uh, it's a privilege that you've given me this, this opportunity, actually, uh, this evening. Yeah, I'm humbled. Uh, we seeing where you brought uh, this broadcast and where you've come from, we, you've come a long way. I'm a very humble person. I, I'm a beginner. I grew up in Kilopon in Kitwe. Mm. I grew up in Kitwe. All my school was in Kitwe. I went uh, to um, Delta Senior School, went to uh, uh, Cobra Belt University, where I graduated and left. Mm. And then I joined, uh, briefly I joined the Army as an officer cadet. Okay. And uh, after the date I left, because uh, when the results came out, I did also had to leave and went to Columbia University. From there I went, I briefly came to Lusaka and worked for uh, my second group of companies. Okay. In the college uh, group of companies, I worked there as a training management accountant and I left uh, Coopers and Libraries. Mm. Uh, Coopers and Libraries was a long story because I did a lot of auditing. And the current president, uh, HH, was my boss at uh, Hoopers. Uh, yeah, we interacted, and that's why I, I came to know him and we had fellowship. And from there, I left and I joined BP. You joined BP? Yes, I joined BP. I joined BP for a long, long time. And during that time, I, I answered the call of God to, to be a preacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, then we left uh, from there uh, to come to school. USA, I think in 1999, mm -hmm. and the, the journey has been uh, a quite interesting journey mm -hmm. that we pass through trials and tribulations, mountains and valleys. Mm -hmm. But here we are, we are standing. Uh, I, uh, I fall under the, the grace of why uh, I was ordained as a minister by Lord Percy from Columbus, Ohio, and also then I came under uh, uh, the late uh, uh, Bishop Calvo, mm -hmm. who ordained me as a, as a bishop. So. I, I am, uh, like you said, I'm a preacher. I write books, I've written five books, uh, but two of them are on Amazon. You can mm -hmm. see them, one is Overcomer, the other one is Through the Valley of the Shadow of Death. We'll talk about that later on. Mm -hmm. Briefly, that is me. And then I also a member of the American Economic Association. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, 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 I kind of uh, have a lot of legs in different areas. In different yeah. areas, and yeah. And doing ministry in Africa. We've combined the meaning of means we, we call it kingdom business. Mm. We combine business and the actual spreading of the gospel. So that's me. I'm married. And my wife, Mary Lombe. We've been married for almost 30 years now. So we, we've got five kids. Mm. And all of them are with us here. Amen. Yes, sir. Pastor, I can tell that you have a very rich CV. <laughs> 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 I didn't even know where to start from, but mm. I can tell that your legs are, are in most places. Mm. But that's a beauty, or that's the advantage that I have to have people that are experienced uh, like you. So uh, Bishop, the reason why we are sitting down today is about, uh, uh, I know you were at home not long yes, ago, yes. you were at the continent. So I wanted to find out what was the assessment uh, when you get home, when you got home, what was the assessment for the people that are in diaspora? The idea here is to inspire people that are in diaspora to look back, to go and invest. So what was your assessment? You know, my assessment, first, first and foremost, I'll tell you that um, I'm a Zambian. And I'm very much interested in Zambia. I mm. call myself the first ambassador or self-appointed ambassador for Zambia. Mm. Uh, I'm a pan-Africanist, like I said. I, I believe we can only develop a country mm. if as Zambians we venture into, po into politics, mm -hmm. venture into a lot of other economic uh, sectors, uh, political sectors and economic sectors and a lot of other sectors that are unveiled to us. Now, when I went to Zambia, you know, given the background that we're coming from uh, uh, PF, uh, yeah, regime, yeah. government, we saw the shortfalls in that government, and then now we transition into uh, UPND, mm. which is under, level, under, the, uh, under of, uh, the president of HH. Like mm. I said, he was my boss at Coopers. So uh, when I try to dive into that and analyze the situation, I'm not biased because mm. he was my boss, no. Yes. I just want to say the truth. The economy is doing fine. Okay. Of course, there will be a lot of things that will be tough and all those things, that, but those are uh, those are death marks or, or pains that you have to rush the nation into another level. Mm. When you look at the GDP of the country that has developed and improved, because now our focus is more 
info more in the things that we have in the country. Mm. So UPND has put up, set up those conditions. Now, when I went there, I've looked at a lot of opportunities for people in the diaspora. Yes. I will first go to, and I'll give an example. South Korea developed on the basis of what? People from diaspora. Because mm. they, they, they made sure that they were people going to diaspora, yes. bringing in money. And mm. you know, remitting money. That's uh, developing to, uh, to, to the GDP of the country and developing to the nation as well. Mm. So we they had uh, that forex coming into 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 the into the country. Even as you can, if you look at the number of times you guys go out to send money in, in Zambia. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot of money you're putting in there in terms of forex. Yes. Now the things that I saw in Zambia there are a lot of opportunities. Yes. Because first and foremost, you can't develop a country without setting up uh, certain standards mm. or putting infrastructure that will entice you and me yes. to go back to Zambia. Yes. But I saw the willingness of the president mm. uh, appointing even just to congratulate my, my, my brother Williamson as ambassador mm. from among us ourselves. So we see that the president is open, the government is open, the PND is open, and we, we have opportunities even as in the diaspora. When I went there, I saw a lot of opportunities. One, in farming. Mm, farming. I saw a lot of opportunities in construction. I saw a lot of opportunity in terms of technology, mm. transport technology, knowledge. Knowledge is power. Uh, and in education. And a lot of other factors that Zambians can contribute to, even just being exposed, mm. being in the US for almost 27, 25 years, mm. my exposure is totally different from the person who's lived in Zambia. I'm yes. not trying to demean them, but my exposure is, is different. So when I looked at the opportunities, I looked at small things that we can do you know, as people in diaspora. Yes. I'll give you an example. As people in diaspora can come up and form a company, mm. go and clean up Lusaka, go yes. and clean up uh, the city, go and clean up the town by us uh, canvassing uh, companies here mm. to, to get those equipment and ship them into Zambia. Mm. Uh, mining also. We can come together and uh, do what they call, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, where you, 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 you mobilize money, money from yeah. different people, mm -hmm. you know, from different people, and then you, you, you contribute mm -hmm. and buy mines, buy a lot of other companies. We can invest ourselves as Zambians, mm -hmm. but we have to entice the, the people in diaspora. You have to put certain areas that to entice me mm -hmm. to go back to Zambia. So the opportunity that I saw is one, companies in uh, business in farming, trading, trading. Uh, mining, Mm. And uh, a lot of other things, even technology like, like I told you, IT, mm. we, we can invest there because the little money that we have here, if we contribute and put money together, mm. we can do, do a lot of things in Zambia. Yeah, a lot of things, a lot of opportunities. We shouldn't shy away from the fact that we are Zambians in the mm. first place. Mm. And we should be proud to be Zambians, That's of course. Exactly, yeah. And not everybody aspires to be a politician, mm. but we can aspire to be to, to be a force mm. in the economic sector, mm. a force in the spiritual sector, a mm. force in all different kind of human endeavor in Zambia. Mm -hmm. So we we should come together, Zambians, and say, what should we do for our country? Mm -hmm. huh? Not what the country should do for, for us. us yeah. There are a lot of things that we can do. So the opportunities that I saw, there are a lot. There are a lot of opportunities. Uh, it's just a matter of sitting down, you analyze, come up with a business plan, mm -hmm. and that's the government to... To, to come in, probably I'll, 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 I'll talk about that and make an appeal to the president, uh, Mr. HH, but he should open it up and mm. embrace us from the diaspora. diaspora. i give you an example, South Korea. Mm -hmm. South Korea is developing because of people in diaspora. diaspora. Yes, Pastor, thank you so much. I truly appreciate for all that you have uh, actually uh, mentioned the areas of development you, you tackled about, you talked about agriculture, you talked about uh, transport, transportation sector, and of course there's real estate and other stuff like that. So um, I know if we, we have 10 Zambians coming together, put a $10,000 each, of course we can start a company in Zambia yes. that can be, you know we have a lot of mangoes in Zambia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can have organic mangoes, yes. uh, uh, pack them uh, real good, and of course you can ship it, uh, it can be another exported because that's organic than letting the mangoes yes. going yes. just to waste. So Pastor, I, I know you have talked about this, but I want to know, I want to tell me a little bit of the challenges that you saw when you went home. Well, you know, of course I've got friends that have returned back home, to, uh, that have returned to the continent, but when they go, they say, oh my God, 
they complain the banking system, mm -hmm. maybe the efficiency of our, our, our people, the, 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 the small, small things that they complain about. What, what are the challenges that you noticed when you... Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. There is, there is a saying that when you go to Rome, do as the Romans do. Mm. The biggest problem that we have with people in diaspora is that when you go back, you want to be grandly and, mm. you know, show off and tell people that you know it all. No, all you level yourself down. We are a country that is developing. You can't compare uh, America to Zambia. Zambia. Zambia is only 50 years in, of independence. Mm -hmm. America is 250 years. So you don't have bottlenecks in the way they run the economy, in the way they do the banking system. But for me, what I've come to understand is that play at their level. If you find that there are problems in the, in the banking system, work through that system mm -hmm. and try to develop it. Don't bash it and put it down. Mm -hmm. Everything in Zambia is, is there. For me, they're very wide. Banks, the network, everything, the money transfer is powerful. There is money, money mobile, money, all that kind of, you can transact. But you know, the, the problem with the challenges that we have is that when you go to the bank, they'll be asking certain documents. Mm. Like, where is the rage? Where is this thing? Things that are not necessary. Mm. For you as a Zambian, you've got a passport, you've got a rage, you can transact. And so the, the banks themselves should be able to recognize that these people are coming from diaspora. Yes. And they put up certain ways that will entice you mm. or make it easy for you to open an account. Yes. That is one thing. Then also registration of companies. We can do register companies through an app on, 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 on uh, Pacra, Pacra, where there is an opportunity for us to, to, to register a company rather than going to Zambia and go and register with Pacra. You can do it online. All those things should be online. Once we do that, develop, that is in terms of IT. Mm. Once we develop that, then we'll be okay. Okay. The challenges that are there, any country has challenges. Mm. But all you do need to do is sacrifice as well as a country and you know that we are sacrificing because we can't just develop right there. Rome was not built in a day. Mm. It took years and years to develop it and perfect. So I think those challenges, we can work around them and also push our notion as Zambia. Yeah. Well, Pastor, thank you so much. Now that I know you, 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 you talked about how to balance, and of course, the, the, the one thing that I've noticed when it comes to the banking system in my country mm -hmm. is that I take one single account, but when I make a call to find out about the balance, this person will ask me, who, who knows you in the bank? Mm -hmm. The bank shouldn't know me personally, mm -hmm. but they can identify me by the question that they will ask if they ask the NRC number and yeah. other stuff like that. Yeah. Because, of course, supposing the person I know in the bank quit the job, quit the job yeah. how I'm going to transact? Yeah. So they have to come up with a system in such a way that no matter who is working at that particular time can ask me the question as long as it, it goes along with whatever yeah. the information in the bank, mm. I'm supposed to make the transaction. So yeah. thank you so much for pointing out. No, even on that one, Bapumo, I think I'll cut you short. You know, when we are also talking about the bankings and the, the identification, there can be a question that can be asked who you know in the mm. bank just to solidify uh, you, your position in the bank or what, the amount of money you're putting in there. But that shouldn't be the basis for you to open up an account. Mm -hmm. Like I've said, what if the guy is gone? Or the guy is resigned? Or he's dead? So we can't be using that as a benchmark or as a reference for us to invest in the... In the there's a system in the bank, actually. I've opened up accounts myself. Okay. Uh, the only thing I do is give them my details and then uh, they were asked maybe for a reference. Yeah. Uh, who can be there? But from your own, you can ask any, any subject of yours to, to, <laughs> to, to do that. So that's not a problem, yeah. At least every Zambian, at least know one or two three people who know you. Even if you left the country 10 years ago, there should at least be somebody who know you. So for that, that's just for identification, which we use in Africa. Because of the way we grow up, the way we live, we're so much intertwined mm -hmm. into each other's business. So the person who best uh, recommend you is, you to, to anything is me. Okay. Or the best person who can recommend anyone to, for, for me is you. So I think that's where the, the thing is. But that shouldn't be the, the big yes, thing. Yes, 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 yes. I understand that especially when I'm going to open an account, even here, yeah. they will give uh, maybe two yes, reference. Yes, yes. But in the case where the account is already open, oh, yeah. and then I need to get a balance, someone else is telling me yeah. that who do you know in the no, bank for no. you to give me all the balances? No, is it a dormant account or is it still active? It's still active. No, it's I, still active. That's the part that I didn't like. No, no, I don't think it's... it's so, it's, brothers and sisters, yeah. I'm sure there will be people that will be watching these videos. Wherever you watch these videos, we need help. We need a system yeah. that will bring people that are in diaspora, mm. you know, you have people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If there are people that are in diaspora that have got the accounts that we need to make transactions, so it doesn't matter where we are, yeah. but we still need to access those funds. Mm. Find a system, yes. give us a call. Yes. That is 
apply to their account yes. so that I don't need to find someone else in a bank yes. who knows me personally yeah, because yeah. in case she has gone on leave or anything else mm. like that and yet I need to make some transaction. So Pastor, thank you so much on that area, but you still have so much. <laughs> but, but even the identification of saying, well, bank. I mean, it's uh, ridiculous. It doesn't make sense in that uh, not everybody knows people who work in the bank. What of uh, some of us maybe know people in, who work in the police force? That's yeah. exactly So yes. I think that shouldn't be benchmark or that shouldn't be used anyway. If they're using it, then they should lie on it and uh, threaten that. that, that's, that, that that's, that's the part because I, I was asked that question uh, when I wanted to find out the balance. I was asked that question to say, who do you know in the bank? Who can identify you personally in the bank? I said, no, 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 no. The person who who knew me personally retired. Yes, yes. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's not right. Maybe you were depositing a billion. <laughs> you need to know that. So. No, 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 no. So, Pastor, now the fact that we, uh, you have seen uh, the issues that is happening at home, yeah. and the, the fact that we are here, we cannot just be a by, bystanding player to say the government will do it for us. Yes. What message do you have for the people that are in diaspora? If you are to speak to them, the people that's going to see this uh, uh, video, what message do you have for them? No, the message is very simple. I'm, uh, I'm in diaspora myself. Mm -hmm. I intend to invest in Zambia. I intend to make opportunities available for, for, for myself to invest in Zambia. And I also talk about one, first us people in diaspora, mm -hmm. we should first and foremost know that we're Zambians. Okay. And be proud to be Zambians, be proud to be an African. Mm -hmm. So everywhere you go, you have to sell the nation. Uh, we might not be in good books with the church, you might not be good books with Lungu, but that is, that is, you should be above that because Zambia is bigger than these two people. So when you go in there to, 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 to sell Zambia as a person in diaspora, sell Zambia with all your heart, with all your love for the nation. Because we've only got one nation, Zambia. We never, you can be an American citizen, you can be uh, any other citizen, but ultimately you're connected to the motherland. So I think for people in diaspora, I think the first and foremost, you should make it on purpose that we should promote Zambia. So when you promote Zambia, then we come up with a force. Through him, we are, we are a chief within Zambia. Through some areas, we can connect to, to the government and let it go into the ear of somebody who's going to hear what we, what we are doing. Murmuring and uh, insulting the leaders, that doesn't help. Because maybe they don't even hear your insults. So, that, so we should find channels of connecting to those people in leadership. Correct. There are people that know the president. There are people that have worked with HH. I told you I worked with HH. There are people that can use, um, I know Gary Combo. There are people, all those people, people can talk to them, don't understand. They, they're human beings like us. So for us in diaspora, we should make any possible opportunity mm. to engage the government. When the president comes to DC, we should all flock in numbers, go and meet him and then ask questions there. You see what I mean? Mm. That's the only way people will know that there's a people decide. But if we just keep quiet and you complain, then uh, we won't be known as people in diaspora. We're just people that went out to America and to have a good life. Mm. So for us, I think in diaspora, first we have to understand and know that we're Zambians. Mm. When we know that we're Zambians, then we got to push the needle above that mm. and say, how do we engage you and how do we engage us? Mm. I think that's the beginning of the whole thing. Yeah, Pastor, thank you so much. I know uh, previously that we complained much about, oh, if they give us dual citizenship, which the government has done, yeah. has uh, given that, yeah. us that opportunity to mm. the people that are in diaspora. So you can be uh, Zambian American, yeah. but you still have an opportunity to invest yeah. home. What is the advantage for the people that are in diaspora? If you're going to speak to them directly, what is the advantage to invest into the continent? I mean, uh, you know, I'll, 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 I'll say what the member said. Yes. Umutoto we suwaba kuisa. Umutoto we umutoto waba. That should be. That should be. That should be your focus. Okay. So if you come to North America, umutoto waka fuwa to waka usang. So you can be an American citizen, well and good. It's uh, it's up there that you're American citizen. But at the end of the day, who are you? Where are your roots? Mm. You're Zambian. Me, I'm, I was born in Zambia. Mm. I, I was I'm a copala, so I, I, I can't change. You see what I mean? Yeah. Mm. So you, you, you can't just because you've got a British passport. Mm. 
Then you are not me, I'm now in Zambia, I Lamba, no, no, no. If you're insulting yourself, That's or you're insulting your parents who are living in Zambia. Mm. So first and foremost, identify Zambia, are you as a Zambian, and take part with interest. interest. Huh? With, the, you know, put up that, have that impetus to develop the nation, have that impetus to promote the country. Mm. You know, by all means, everywhere you go, tell them, me, I tell people, somebody, oh, is Zambia is a jungle, I said, Zambia is a jungle, what do you think Zambia is a jungle is in your mind here? here. Mm. Zambia is a better place, mm. bigger place. It's a nice place. Mm. So it should come with us. Mm. First, self-identification, self-love uh, for the country, above uh, politics of WPF, what or not. Me, I'm a Zambian. Mm. I'll die a Zambian. Mm. And even if I have to die here, God forbid, I have to be buried in Zambia. Because be that's where I was that's where I was born. <laughs> <laughs> Zambia. So yeah, so so we, we can't just be oh number we are joining Mr. Shah. No. We are Zambians. Mm -hmm. Promotion of this country should be Zambians. Zambia, yeah. And we should avoid of going on Facebook, on those insulting the president, insulting the, the, the former president. No, you're downgrading ourselves. Mm -hmm. Those are our leaders, those are our presidents. Mm -hmm. People chose them, we got to respect them, and then we move the nation further. But what I want to say, the people in diaspora used Facebook to promote Zambia. Mm -hmm. Not to go and say insult about HH, HH, what or not. Promote Zambia. Promote Zambia. Yes, sir. So brothers and sisters, yes, we are using Zambia as an example, mm. but we are talking about the continent yes. as at large. Mm. So it doesn't matter where you're coming from, you can be coming from Ghana. Yes. Think about investing in Ghana. Mm. You may be coming from Senegal, the story is the same. We are inspiring, we want to inspire everyone, regardless of where you're coming from. It takes the very yes, earth yes. to develop the continent. The, the narration actually has changed. Uh, You've seen most of the leaders are now coming together. Mm. Uh, uh, this Rwanda president, Museveni, and all those guys on issues that pertain to our country, our mm. continent. We should come together. There's nothing like you're from Ghana. The, 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 the situation is still the same. You're in diaspora, you want to invest in your country. Mm. Whether Ghana, we should go as Pan Africanists, push the, 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 the things, investment, entice people to go in there. You can have political ambitions. There's nothing wrong. Everybody's got political ambitions. I've got political ambitions. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean now you should downgrade the people that are already there before me. Mm -hmm. No. You should also go and work and support them. And uh, also people in Zambia, they should receive us, mm -hmm. not as the political children, but as people who are part of them. Because we, some came here for school, some came here for different kinds of things. So if you're going, there is some area of expertise mm -hmm. that we can impart into our nation. So we should also be embraced and it's part of, part of the community, and also share ideas and develop, uh, develop our nation. There's only one person who's going to develop the nation, is the Zambian. Zambian. Yes, I, like, I like the part that you said we need to be embraced, because you see, there's that disconnection between people that have gone in diaspora yes. and the people that are at home. When you return home, they say, oh, well, you mean these Americans, yes, oh, you yes. mean these British. Mm. We, shouldn't, we shouldn't be looked as yeah. those, but we should also be embraced yes, and yes. be part, yes. or also we can contribute to, to the economy of yes. the country. I think on that, it's a two-way thing. In that, I'll tell you why. Uh, as people in diaspora, when you go there, don't go in there to show them, now I am this. Mm. Um, you know, like you've transformed yourself from being Zambia, and now you're American. Mm. Uh, yeah, you might dress well, you might, but don't go in there to show that um, you know, I'm from America. I'm and from America. Then you downgrade the other guys. They also rebel. <laughs> they want to re re resent you. I've got friends who are there, they respect me as a bishop, they respect me as a friend. And they respect me as... Uh, as a professional, because I, I, I mingle with everybody. I talk to them at their level, and I don't uh, pitch to them all. I'm, uh, no, don't say that me, I'm from America. No, 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 then people won't. Oh, no. So it's a matter of embracing each other and uh, adding value to one another. We are Zambians, we promote Zambia, talk about Zambia, and uh, don't go there and posing around and telling them, ah, you People won't understand you. They won't understand they also you. also go in and come in a different way. Mm. They, will, they will start insulting you, yes, sir. So first, uh, come a month ago, I had a video that I, I put across on the YouTube. I was talking about one of our own from diaspora that returned back home. Yes. But all this video of time, the money through the family, yes. family members. Yes. I'm hoping that the family members are building a house for yeah, her. Yeah. But apparently, when she was over here, she fell sick, mm, yeah. and that the sickness thought like it would be okay for yes. me go if, back. I, if I can go back mm. home. But when she returned back home, she just came to realize that all the money that she's saying, yes. the house was not there. Yes. Which it was so devastating 
to know that this person has worked all these yes, years yes, yes. and the family members have been actually dropping the money. Yes, yes. So now, the fact that you were home, what would you want to see the government help <laughs> when it comes to that uh, area? Yes. Because you see, it's hard to build to trust the relatives. Yes. But there must be a system where, yes, we can be out, but we can trust the system to help us so that we can contribute to the uh, uh, development of the country. I think on that, I will look at the personal uh, people involved. First and foremost, I'll make an appeal to uh, parents, our own natives. We work very hard. Mm. We raise money for the development of some of them will pay school fees and mm. that thing. So if people entrust you with money, first and foremost, that's going to be for the family. Mm. So why are you going to abuse the money? Why are you going to steal from somebody who's working for the betterment of the family? Mm. So that is the responsibility now for families to tell people, guys, this is the guy is going in the diaspora. Let's see, come together and uh, develop ourselves. Mm -hmm. But certain people, they have got a fear in mind, they want to steal and all that kind of thing. I will open up to you. I'm, I'm also a victim of that. Uh, the pastor that I tried to stay and, and, you know, I gave him, we gave him a house, he was living for free. But what happened? We sent him money, he's telling him he's building pictures and all that kind of thing. He didn't do that. So that's a individual uh, a person that I can't use against all Zambians. Okay. But for my, I will use this channel through the president, through leaders and the chiefs, that they should tell people that people in diaspora are part of us. Yes, when they are remitting money, it's for us. Mm -hmm. Let's look after, let's be a good, the Bible said, be a good custodian of what God has given you. Mm -hmm. So why are you going to steal the money from your own relatives? Mm -hmm. I've had stories, some people have even died, died collapsed and died, because you find that uh, things are being, being stolen by, uh, by relatives. Mm -hmm. And the worst part is your own blood steals from you. Steal from that you. is that is that is just so deep. Mm -hmm. So my appeal to people listening to this, please Look after them. Where are you going to go? Or where is that person going to go? He's been working here for thirty years. He goes there. You know? So how do you how are you going to how are you going to live a life where you're stealing from your bruno? Mm. You see from people that know you, when they're investing, you're stealing. No, the government itself, we should lobby as people in diaspora. Mm. When such people happen, the government should go with them with full force of the law. Mm. Put, take them to jail. Because exactly. all they're doing is they're killing you. That's so true. my appeal is the government should put up laws mm. that protect us from the, us people in diaspora. Mm. If you steal from a person in diaspora, we'll make sure the full course of law will follow you. That's exactly then true. people will be, maybe there will be, be fear mm. that they, 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 they will come under a uh, uh, court system. Mm. But just to say, oh, uh, people, when we send money, they should be doing this. Is, it's a trust team, mm. and also it goes back to the family. To the family what yeah. do you have? What are the values that you've installed in the family? Mm. Have you installed the uh, family values that you develop, develop you? Now, when you look at the Bible, I'm a clergy, I'll look at the Bible, uh, Proverbs 14, 34, it says, uh, Righteousness exalts a nation. Mm. Sin is a reproach to that nation. Mm. So if we have people stealing, that's a sin. That's a sin. Let's yeah. put something that will exalt the nation. Yeah. So that when people hear that, ah, I send money to them, that, ah, Zambians, they build me, they are brothers and sisters. But if they always say, oh, at a certain moment, they store at ah, Zambians. Mm. Mm. Now, can you entice an investor? No, no you can't no, entice no, an investor. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, mostly, like, I think, for my appeal is to these people who are our brothers' relatives, mm. people here work. They're sending money there, please build even a kind and that. And this even why I call you, why I call I call you, I call you, I Don't see everything you are showing me. People here, they need that investment. We want it. Let it support your brothers and sisters. Let build mansions. Let them build whatever factories and employ you guys. Don't steal, please. That's my appeal for me because I was a victim. Don't steal from us. Please embrace us. Let's work together. When we send money, it's for everybody. Pastor, thank you so much. I like what you, you, you mentioned that uh, let the government come on full force. Because you see, people, they take advantage because after all, he's my brother. Yes, yes. So and what, what are you going to do? Mm. So, and he's in America. He's in America. Mm. But remember that that money that goes yes. to Zambia, mm. it's not only my family that benefits. The, no, the government. The government mm. also benefits. Mm. So the government has to put in mm. some roles mm. for sure yes. to protect us mm. from our families. Mm. Because if we says, yeah. I don't have anybody else, mm. so there's no point for me to yeah. send money, mm. guess that mm. who suffers is the nation mm. That suffers at yes, large because yes. the folk does not even go yes. there. So, brothers and sisters, yes, let's find means and ways to making sure that we continue uh, sending the money. Yes, we may not trust our families, or if we sit down with our families.
tell them the importance. I'll give you an example. Uh, when with the importance when you send the money at yes, home, yes. you may be building one small house. That builder has the children. Mm -hmm. So when you send to pay the builder, the builder is able to. It trickles down. Yeah, mm. it trickles down. The mm. builder is going to send the child mm. to school, mm. Mm. and that builder, we have someone else who supply the the, the materials. Yeah. Also, you're going to realize that you are able to uh, uh, provide employment. We cannot just all wait and looking for the government to do it for us. Yeah. In us, we have got a responsibility, making sure that we can help or alleviate a little bit the challenges that the, the continent is facing. So that beauty when you are going to uh, uh, money. I remember when I started doing what I was yes. doing. Ten, ten, ten years down on the road, someone says, my child has graduated from University of Zambia. You can imagine the little man. And that is the most unique thing that we have as Gambians. Like, we interact with one another, we live with one another. It doesn't matter how big the family is. We say everything, no matter how little it is. And people are content with that. That even if things are going hard, you can still observe smiling faces under each and every person that you meet along the street. So that is a plus for everybody in the Gambia. And that is why I'm a proud Gambian and a proud African. And I believe I can make it. And I'm going nowhere but in the Gambia. <laughs> Nobody is going to do it for us. That's right. If we are all running away, you know, when are we going to make it? We have to stay in Africa, develop in Africa, and then show to the world that Africa have a better image than the one they portray in the West. I think this is what we all need to do as Africans. And then we promote that as Pan-Africans and also as Gambians. Excellent. I couldn't have said it better myself, actually. You know, I propose that you come and do some shows with me. This brother's got it going on. Yeah. But seriously, um, you know, I think that the, the, the misrepresentation of Africa um, has, wow, I, I mean, it permeated my brain. And I knew because I was coming from a Pan-African background, but still, you know, the images are forced upon us. So I think you young Gambians have a responsibility yeah. to show the other side of Gambia, the Gambia that, you know, we diasporians and many people in the West don't see. They just don't see it. Exactly. I think that is the work of the academics. That is the work that we need to do as young scholars. For far too long, people have been portraying Africa negatively to the outside world. And we know that that was done by individuals whose sole aim was to dominate Africa, to exploit Africa's resources, and then to continue to colonize us politically. Now, our role as academics, as young scholars, is how do we make sure that this picture is changed from the literature itself, going back to rewrite the books, to rewrite the history of Africa, and then to show to the world that we have a better image that the, that the world is actually seen as of today. And then you also come to realize that we need to invest in Africa because foreign in investment always leads to capital flies and etc. Because people who mm -hmm. come in and invest, at the end they can take all the resources and then you come to realize that it becomes another challenge for us. But when Africans invest, the money stays in Africa, which is a plus. It can enhance, it yeah. can help when it comes to employment, when it comes to, you know, coming up with all the facilities and then enhancing the development that we own, that we all desire as Africans and etc. I think that is what we need to do as we speak and that is what we all Africans need to be thinking into that particular line, like trying to see how we can repent that particular picture shown by the outsiders yes. about Africa because they do. in fact let me tell you that was this quotation that I read it was actually done by a British parliamentarian Lord Macaulay in 1835 he speaks about Africa and then he said in order for the West to dominate Africa they need to overthrow our very backbone and that is our education system when we believe that everything that is Western is correct then they can dominate us forever exactly and that is 1835. They've been working on those bases. So today it is high time because we know the realities. Let us try to rewrite the history. Let us try to work again and attract investment in Africa by Africans.